Primary Sources, Anti-Imperialist League Platform, 1899. Editor's Note. The Anti-Imperialist League formed in 1898 to oppose the annexation of the Philippines. After the Spanish-American War, the United States received the territories of the Philippines, Guam, and Puerto Rico from Spain. The Anti-Imperialist League believed that American expansion of territory would destroy the nation's fundamental principles, particularly that a strong republic requires the consent of the governed. American politician George S. Boutwell, the founder and president of the American Anti-Imperialist League, supported independence in the Philippines until his death in 1905. The subjugation of any people is criminal aggression. The policy known as imperialism is hostile to liberty. It tends towards militarism and evil from which it has been our glory to be freed. We regret that it has become necessary in the land of Washington and Lincoln to reaffirm that all men of whatever race and color are entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We maintain that governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. We insist that the subjugation of any people is criminal aggression. It is open disloyalty to the defining principles of our government. We strongly oppose the policy of the present national administration in the Philippines. It seeks to extinguish the spirit of 1776 in those islands. We deplore the sacrifice of our soldiers and sailors. Their bravery deserves admiration even in an unjust war. We denounce the slaughter of the Filipinos as a needless horror. We protest against the extension of American sovereignty by Spanish methods. We demand the immediate end of the war against liberty begun by Spain and continued by us. We urge that Congress be promptly convened. We call on Congress to announce to the Filipinos our intent to grant them the independence for which they have so long fought. The right is theirs. Cannot act upon the ancient belief that might makes right. The United States has always protested against the subjugation of the weak by the strong. A self-governing state cannot accept sovereignty over an unwilling people. The United States cannot act upon the ancient belief that might makes right. Imperialists assume that the destruction of self-government in the Philippines by American hands, all opposition here will cease. This is wrong. Much as we abhor the war of criminal aggression in the Philippines, greatly as we regret that the blood of the Filipinos is on American hands, we more deeply resent the betrayal of American institutions at home. The real firing line is not in the suburbs of Manila. The foe is in our own household. The attempt of 1861 was to divide the country. That of 1899 is to destroy its basic principles and noblest ideals. Whether the ruthless slaughter of the Filipinos shall end next month or next year is but an incident in a contest. It must go on until the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States are rescued from the hands of their betrayers. Those who argue about values will, while our republic is undermined will be listened to as little as someone who would rant about small issues while their house is on fire. The hope of liberty is a strong force. It will hurl aside those who seek to destroy the character of our institutions. This administration has ignored the issues. We deny that the obligation of all citizens to support their government in times of national peril applies to the present situation. The administration has ignored the issues upon which it was chosen. It has demanded the unanimous support of all citizens while it continues the fighting. Because of this, representative government itself is at risk. We propose to contribute to the defeat of any person or party that stands for the forcible subjugation of any people. We shall oppose for re-election all who in the White House or in Congress betray American liberty in pursuit of un-American gains. We still hope that both of our great political parties will support and defend the Declaration of Independence in the closing of the century. We hold with Abraham Lincoln, 
that no man is good enough to govern another man without that man's consent. When the white man governs himself, that is self-government. But when he governs himself and also governs another man, that is more than self-government, that is despotism. Those who deny freedom to others deserve it not for themselves and are under a just God cannot long retain it.